Happy birthday. 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 It's not my birthday. Marvelous hello, friends and loved ones. How are you today? You know, some of my favorite video games of all time has always been the chill, relaxing, farming slash life simulator genre. And it turns out, the Nintendo Switch has been one of the best consoles for this. Like, I can play some Stardew Valley, where my lovely wife Abigail and I raise bees for our thriving honey business. Then I can hop on over to the tropical island of Kamapua'a in Animal Crossing New Horizons. It's the perfect place to... be. <laughs> Heck, did you know there's even a Story of Seasons slash Doraemon crossover? And it was developed by Brownies, the studio made up of a bunch of former Legend of Mana team members. So naturally, it means everything is beautiful. Just look at these bee houses. Gorgeous. Heck, even earlier this year, the Switch got a remake of my favorite Harvest Moon game ever with Friends of Mineral Town. So come check out Honey Bee Farm. We raise rabbits. But today, I'm here to talk about a very special game. We're going to be talking about this. And for recording purposes, I actually mean this. Either way, we're talking about Rune Factory 4. Rune Factory is a series that first began on the Nintendo DS back in 2006, and it was lauded as a Fantasy Harvest Moon. There was also a game called Innocent Life, which was a sci-fi-based Harvest Moon that no one, no one ever really talks about. But Rune Factory went on to become a pretty big spin-off on its own. It spawned three sequels for the DS, a direct sequel to the first game for the Wii, an entry for the Wii and PS3 called Tides of Destiny, and the fourth entry for the 3DS that was eventually ported to the Switch. And I'm a little embarrassed to say, 4 is actually the only one I've played. <gasps> I know, I know, it's embarrassing. But I definitely love to pick up those previous console entries, and without a doubt, I'll be getting Rune Factory 5 when it comes out next year. So in Rune Factory 4, you play as either Lest or Frey, and instead of simply inheriting a farm from your dead grandpa or the usual business, as a fantasy game, Rune Factory takes a much more traditional JRPG approach. You get knocked off an airship and get amnesia. A dragon and her amazing butlers mistake you for a prince that's supposed to show up and immediately put you to work on the farm, because I guess that's what princes do. In all fairness, I don't know many princes personally, so that might be accurate. The real prince, this dork named Arthur, shows up, and he's pretty content to not do farm work, so he just kind of lets you stay where you're at. Everything went better than expected, I guess. Now, because there's so much to do in this game, I originally had some trouble putting this script together, because I didn't know what to talk about, when, and just... Progressively, this episode was kind of a nightmare for me to write. But then I was looking through the game's instruction manual. Yes, this game has an instruction manual. Thank you, Xseed. I will always appreciate your dedication to keeping these things alive. I discovered that Rune Factory 4's game progression can basically be broken down into four different parts. So I thought I'd go through these one at a time and try to explain what makes this title so special. Get it? Because it's Rune Factory 4 special. Like any other game in this genre, the townsfolk are what really makes it stand out, and you'll encounter some wonderful characters throughout the town of Selfia. There's the lazy but avaricious blacksmith Botto, the inhumanly strong mustachioed butler Volcanon, the regrettably not dateable elf detective Illuminata, the regrettably not dateable innkeep Lin Fa, the regrettably not dateable nurse Nancy. I'm aware of the pattern. And then, of course, the best character in the entire game, give it up for Porcoline de Saint Coquille. I cannot overstate how much I love this character, so instead, I'll just show it. 
Porcoline here has been a big part of my channel since my very first video. See, there are two special words that many of you have come to associate with me. And those two words are... Marvelous hello! Yep, I owe it all to Porcoline. And remember how I said I'd never played any other Rune Factory games? Well, the art book that came with the collector's edition of the Switch version clued me in that apparently every game has a member of the DeSaint Coquille family. They're like the Belmonts, only with less Dracula slaying and more... being delightfully eccentric fat folks, and I love them. Now that I have this knowledge, I am definitely excited to meet the DeSaint Coquille of Rune Factory 5. And then of course, you've got the people you actually can date, the bachelors and bachelorettes of Rune Factory 4. Lest has some overall good options to pick from. There's the sleepy maid, Clorica, who is really cute with her purple hair, and I actually consider dating her on this playthrough. There's Lin Fa's daughter, Zhao Pai, who makes a pretty darn good first impression. And there's even this super awesome, hot, sexy monster girl babe named Amber. Aw, oh, just look at her. I would totally date her in a harp- wait. Okay, so once you defeat her, she transforms into this girl who looks like she's nine? Never mind. I ultimately decided that I was gonna go with Margaret. She's super cute, she's got a great personality, she's an elf, and hey, as an added bonus, she happens to be Porcoline's adopted daughter. So my favorite character will become my father-in-law as a result. That's just gravy. Overall, I do like most of the characters in this game. I can't really compare them to the cast from any other Rune Factories, but it is a nice town filled with lovable characters. You can befriend them by talking to them every day and giving them gifts that they like. And an added bonus to befriending everybody is that once someone gets to Friendship Level 3, you'll be able to bring them with you on adventures as party members. Like other games in this genre, Rune Factory 4 has special events that can unlock with different characters. But one thing I personally don't like is that unlike Story of Seasons or Stardew Valley, these events don't activate simply by going to the right place at the right time once you're at the right friendship level. These events are completely randomized. Sure, some might have a prerequisite, like being at a certain friendship level with specific characters, but there's no real rhyme or reason to making these events happen. And instead of just being a fun little scene, some of these are basically lengthy side quests that can take several days to complete. I will say, it makes dating a heck of a lot harder. You can't even officially date your would-be paramour until you get them to level 7. And even then, when you confess your feelings to them, they're probably just going to assume you're joking. <laughs> How do I... How do I put this on my feelings? So aside from chatting it up with the townsfolk, you've also got to put some love and care into the town of Selfia itself, and there are two main ways you can do this. The first is by giving orders. These can be purchased with prince points that you get for performing certain quests or defeating monsters. Basically, as a prince, but not really, People have to listen to you. These can be simple things like having Botto sell a larger variety of equipment in his shop, or if you bought the collector's edition like I did, declaring that all eligible bachelors and bachelorettes have to walk around in their swimsuits. Everything from increasing your inventory size to unlocking cooking and crafting abilities can be done using these orders. Though one of the biggest things you'll probably be doing is using these orders to host festivals like declaring unanimously that this town dedicates an entire day to the proud and noble Turnip. And you know Volcanon is a good butler, because he really went all out preparing a special event for this holiday that I... clearly just made up. The other way to make this town a bigger and better place is by performing daily tasks that you get from this talking mailbox. You start out only being able to do one of these per day, so you don't get overwhelmed with them, but you'll unlock more down the road. A lot of this stuff just kind of seems like a tutorial, like crafting your own armor, or growing five different types of vegetables, but you're definitely going to want to do these because the rewards are more than worth it. The general store will sell more types of seeds, it'll get you closer to the townsfolk, and it's a good idea to stay on top of these because you'll just feel like you're making real progress. Though sometimes it really sucks being told you have to wait until tomorrow to do more of them.
Just like nearly every other game of this genre, Rune Factory lets you raise crops, and if you've ever played a Story of Seasons game or Stardew Valley, you're probably pretty familiar with the process. But for the sake of me getting that sweet audience retention monies from YouTube, I'll go ahead and explain it anyway. Please don't click away. I, I, I need this. You till the ground with a hoe, plant seeds, water them every day, and the seeds grow after a specific amount of days. There are a couple of extra things you can do, like use fertilizers to make them grow faster, and making sure you grow them in the proper season, but overall it's pretty simple. One touch that I do like is instead of harvesting your fully grown vegetables, you can use your scythe to turn them back into seeds. You'll lose out on the crop itself, but the seeds will be of a higher quality than what you could buy in the shop, and doing this will eventually lead to higher level seeds available for sale as well. It adds a nice bit of strategy to your crops to get better products in the long run by sacrificing some would-be profit now. Aside from selling your vegetables, you can give them to townsfolk as gifts, cook them into delicious meals, and in some cases, even use them for crafting. I grew some yams that I cooked into sweet potatoes, and then I put those sweet potatoes on a stick, and now I'm ready to take on the toughest of monsters with it. The sweet potato is mightier than the sword! Taste my starchy wrath, foul villains! The biggest difference Room Factory has is in the way livestock works. See, rather than buying cows and chickens from a shop in town, Rune Factory has you befriending and raising monsters you find out in the wild. Some of these work similarly to normal farm animals, just with more of a fantasy twist. Like instead of a cow, I got a buffamoo named Butter. And instead of a chicken, I got a cluckadoodle named Benny. I was gonna name her Benedict, but Rune Factory 4 apparently decided it wants to be a Game Boy RPG from the mid-90s, and you only get six characters to name things. Recruiting monsters is pretty easy. It's basically the same principle as Pokémon. Only instead of throwing a ball that imprisons them, you just chuck something they like at them. Buffamoos, for example, like milk, so I threw a carton of milk at Butter, and now we're best friends. And I know what you're all thinking. Are. There. Bees. Yes, I have one, her name is Bumby, she likes honey, she is a murder machine, I love her. And the variety of monsters in the game is pretty solid. Aside from the ones that are just fantasy versions of farm animals, you've got orcs, cat girls, wolves, and even... tomato ghosts? Bless you. It definitely helps to get a few monsters on your side. Some will provide you with stuff like milk or eggs, and much like the townsfolk, you can invite them along as party members in battle. Some of them you can even ride, and heck, once they like you enough, you can assign them chores to do around the farm. It's a pretty nice system that combines elements of monster collecting games like Pokémon or Megami Tensei with the already solid RPG and farm simulation aspects of Rune Factory. Which brings me to our final category. Rune Factory isn't just about life on the farm, it's also about exploring the wide open world around the town. You start out slaughtering mostly harmless sheep monsters in the nearby woods, but soon the world will start to open up to you and you'll be going through ancient ruins, haunted mansions, and even the depths of hell itself. Well, I don't think it's literally hell, but that's the vibe I got from it. The combat in Rune Factory is a lot of fun. Even if you removed all the farming and social simulations from this game, you'd still have a pretty solid action RPG here. There are lots of different weapons to use, with my personal favorites being the dual blades. This particular set I crafted out of some leaks. <laughs> The more you use a weapon, the more combos you'll unlock with that weapon type. You can also use different types of magic, and as you raise your various stats, stuff like your overall health and stamina will increase, allowing you to do more with each day. And when I say various stats, I mean it. Almost everything in this game contributes towards something that can be leveled up. Farming, fighting, walking around, throwing stuff, taking care of your monsters, even bathing. Yes. 
you can bring along two characters in your party, and while I think the townsfolk are generally better party members, and sometimes they'll even react to story events, which is kind of nice, they do come with one massive flaw. This is still a Story of Seasons type game, and that means time is always passing. And unfortunately, unlike your monsters, townsfolk have a bedtime, and if that time happens to come right before you go fight the boss, they have no problem leaving you hanging and teleporting the heck home. Cowards! This is why I like bees more than people. There are also multiple story arcs in Rune Factory 4, with the first one mainly focusing on rescuing four guardians to help that dragon we landed on at the beginning of the game. That one monster girl I mentioned earlier? She was one of them. Each guardian you rescue ends up becoming a member of the town as a bachelor or bachelorette. One of them is this sassy girl in a top hat, who I would have dated... But she's constantly being haunted by the ghost of this little girl, and it's... It's kind of a mood killer, I'm not gonna lie. Unlike most games I play on this channel, I did not finish Rune Factory 4 for this video. Heck, I wasn't even able to get married in the 40 plus hours I've put into the Switch version so far. This isn't a game that's meant to be rushed through. There's so much to do, and so much to discover, and there is a pretty nice chunk of story to keep people entertained. This was one of my favorite 3DS titles, and now it's one of my favorite Switch titles. In fact, I just realized this is the first Switch title I've dedicated an entire video to. Between farming, crafting, all the events with the townsfolk, monster collecting, trying out different weapons, requests, orders, wooing the guy or girl of your dreams... Oh, Meg. Play me a song. Dungeon crawling, and yeah, a pretty meaty RPG storyline, it's hard to imagine you'll ever find yourself in a position where you have nothing left to do. At least not for a long, long time. This is a game I've wanted to talk about for several years, but couldn't because I don't have any solid way of recording 3DS footage. But the day this was announced for the Switch, I knew it was only a matter of time before this video happened. I love Rune Factory 4. I love it even more on the Switch, and I am definitely excited for Rune Factory 5, and really, one of these days, I should probably get around to playing Rune Factory Frontier or Tides of Destiny. And if any of you out there watching would like to see me talk about either of those games, just leave a comment down below telling me so. But I think that is going to be it for today, and until next time, I wish you all a marvelous goodbye. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my video. If you liked it, be sure to click like, but if you really liked it, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos. Extra special thanks to all my friends and loved ones over on Patreon, which you can pledge to today to see your own name in these ending credits. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, take care.